is a colourless toxic gas. Sulphur dioxide is a colourless toxic gas that is soluble in water and more dense than air. One lab prep method for preparation of sulphur dioxide gas involves adding dilute hydrochloric acid to solid sodium sulphate. The sulphur dioxide gas produced is dried by bubbling the gas through conch sulfuric acid. The sulphur dioxide gas can then be collected. Complete the diagram by drawing apparatus suitable for drying the sulphur dioxide and then in the second box apparatus suitable for collecting the gas. It's worth two marks, obviously you're getting one for each one. Okay, so first thing we have to do for drying the gas, it says by bubbling the gas through concentrated sulfuric acid. There's lots of different ways you can do this. I think the simplest is probably to do as a massive test tube, but you can draw that better. Um, so we want to have a stopper in there. Try and keep it cleaner than I'm managing here. Uh, we need to have a tube that is going into the liquid, which I'm just going to put in the bottom in a minute, and a tube that is coming out of that. Now, actually, I have to be care more careful there. You cannot have anything which does not show open points where it needs to be open. Well, that's getting close, but it's better. Okay, so close off this stopper set. Okay, uh, so we want this tube to be connecting in here. And then we'd have this one connecting to uh, there. Oh, it's not the best. You can see what I'm trying to show. And we need to have this bubbling through, which it would do uh, if we had this as conch sulfuric. Okay, right. Okay, apart from the dodgy diagram, you can see what I'm trying to see. You have to bubble it through and you have to collect it above it. Even that stopper's not drawn well. Okay, right. The collecting gas, right, you have to be careful because you might automatically think, I'll just do downward displacement of water. However, it does tell you up here, soluble in water, and that it's more dense than air. Okay, so we, we have two options. Now, I think the easiest option, genuinely, um, is to go with a gas syringe. Okay, if you go with a gas syringe and you just keep it much neater than I'm, than I'm managing to draw, label it so it's clear what you're doing and then you can actually, and you can leave, label here um, your collected SO2, okay? Um, otherwise, the only way you can do it is by um, upward displacement of air because it's more dense. So that means that you need to have some kind of collection vessel, okay? And we need to have a tube that is coming in here and the gas is then displacing the air out. Um, you can't do downward displacement of water and you can't do downward displacement of air because if you did this upside down then obviously it would just keep on falling out the bottom. So I would say a gas syringe is your best one to do. 0.4 grams of sodium sulphite is reacted with 50 centimetres cubed of dilute hydrochloric, concentration one molar. Um, show by calculation that sodium sulphate is the limiting reactant. Okay, so this is an excess calculation question. So first thing you've got to do is work out one of the moles, one of the things. Okay, so let's do the moles of sodium sulphate. So we have, we've got a mass and we've got, well, and sorry, yes, we've got mass and we've got the mass of one mole. You don't even have to go and do the formula mass calculation for this one. So moles is mass divided by formula mass. So 0 0.4 divided by 126.1 means that the moles of sodium sulphate I have is 0 0.003. Right, go to my balance and I know that my sodium sulphate to hydrochloric is a 1 to 2. So if I have 0 0.003 I need That would be my requirement. Okay, so now I check my moles of hydrochloric to work out if I have that. So moles is concentration times volume. So 1 times 0 0.05. And so therefore I have 0 0.05, which is vastly in excess of 0 0.006. Okay. So it's 0 0.00, sorry, 0 0.05 is greater than 0 0.006. So hydrochloric in excess 
and my sodium sulfate is limiting. I would pretty much put the whole thing in, including my little logic here, which is nice to always put down. Okay. Another reaction that produces sulfur dioxide gas involves combustion of carbon sulfide. Calculate the enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole for this reaction using the following information. So a wee HES one. I have, don't know if I've totally given myself enough space for this. I'll sort it out in a minute. Right, um, so uh, we can go algebraic or we can go for full. So let's do the algebraic first because that takes up less space. And then I might wipe it out and do the other one. I'll, I'll decide in a minute. Right, okay, so uh, here's my you know, ABC. And my first one is my A is for the carbon dioxide gas. And that's absolutely fine the way it is. So I'm just going to put an A. And then I'm going to look at B. B is for the, what's this one for? This is for the sulfur dioxide. Okay. Um, it's in the right place. And but I need two of them. So I'm going to put two B in. And then C, C is for this, carbon sulfide, um, but it's on the wrong side, so I'm going to do minus C. Okay, so that is minus 393.5 plus, I'm going to do two times minus 296.8. I would keep all this in my calculator. Um, and then I'm going to flip that one over so my plus becomes a minus, so minus uh, 87.9. Means so my total is minus one o seven five kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that's that's my algebraic. Right, let's do a slightly kind of better or fuller not better, but fuller working if we're if we're doing that. So we've got our target equation up here. We've got all our data equations, so we're looking to fix it, flip it, cancel or merge, whichever you prefer for that one, and then add. Okay, so uh, first data equation, let's have a look at that one. As we said, that was for the carbon dioxide, and it's fine the way it is, so I, I'm fixing that as that's one mole, that's okay. The next one, I'm looking at the sulfur dioxide, and that's not quite right, so I need to times that by two. Uh, so that means I need to shift that to twos, okay? And then, in fact, oh yeah, I've got a calculator in. Uh, so just to actually change the number as it stands, uh, times up by two. Uh, so this actually becomes minus 593.6. Sorry, separate out that. Okay. And, and this one we need to flip over. Oh, sorry, I haven't got to the flip yet, but it's fine with the one. So fixing is just the one times two and one. And then flipping... Uh, the CO2 is fine, the SO2 is fine, but this is the wrong way around, so flip that. So just change that to a minus. And then do my merging ca to cancel it down, make sure it's all okay. Um, so I have flipped this one over. So this becomes CS2 plus, sorry, goes to, not plus, uh, carbon plus two sulfurs. Okay, right. It always looks messier when you're doing the full, but if that's the way that you, you like to do it, and as I said before, I would run it to check it, certainly. Um, right, so carbons. I've got carbon on this side, carbon on that side now, so they cancel out. I've got two sulfurs, they cancel out. I've got uh, three oxygens there, one carbon dioxide, two sulfur dioxides. Um, and yeah, so that's us now. Sorry, get rid of that whole equation there. So that's us now back to target because we've got this and three of these goes to one of those and two of those so i'm happy that my whole thing has been done correctly add this up so minus 393.5 um minus 593.6 minus 87.9 gives me exactly the same answer whichever way works for you the graph shows results for an experiment to determine the solubility of sulfur dioxide in water. Uh, determine the solubility of sulfur dioxide in grams per litre um, in water at 10 degrees C. Right, so this is 
this is the second time this has come up. I don't know if it will be the third by the time I've finished all the papers, but um, it's this idea of, of recognising that we don't have um, a perfect graph and that you end up with some plot points sometimes out of sync. So if I take my line of best fit, I'm going to take it through these points here and we're going to end up with this one just being off the side of the line, uh, an outlier from the line. So if you're then asked to do a 10 degrees C, what you're looking for is where it crosses this line, okay? Now, when I read this a little bit more carefully, when I did my line up, I got it 165 grams per litre. Um, the mark scheme said anywhere between 163 and 167, so I was happy, okay? Um, but that was your that was your range that you were allowed. Information about sulphur dioxide and carbon dioxide shown in the table. Explain fully why carbon dioxide is much less soluble in water than sulphur dioxide is in water. Okay, so this is all to do with like to like in terms of dissolving. And water, you should know, is a highly polar solvent. Okay, we've got um, delta minus on these sides, delta plus is over here. Okay, so the carbon dioxide does have polarity inside the bonds, but because it's got um, complete molecular symmetry, that means that we have basically got, got a non-polar molecule. So this molecule here is not going to associate with the water because it's non-polar. So its solubility is going to be um, not brilliant. Okay. Um, sulfur dioxide, on the other on the other hand, has exactly the same polarity in the bond. It says because it's got a difference of one. But what you've got is a bend in the shape. Now, if you've got a bend in the shape, then we now have asymmetry in the molecule. We can always tell which side we're looking at, and if we can always tell which of that, then we have not only polar bonds, we now have a polar molecule as well. So this means that this will associate quite happily with water, which is why it's massively more soluble, you know, 1.4 grams compared to 94 grams. Okay, um, and that's it.